sometimes. You got the topic? Uh, yeah. It's so gross. Uh, let's do FPGA. Okay. Well, hey guys, this is Alex. And it's Spencer. And we're here with the Crypto Kings. Today we're talking what we know and what we think we know. FPGA. Spencer, I'll let you take it off. Okay, so uh, we have recently just put an order for the uh, BCU 1125s. Which is similar, is the modded version of the VU 1525. Exactly. And they're for a little bit more, they're a little bit less money, so that's why they wanted to make the model distinction. So uh, the FPGA is a field programmable gate array. And basically, what that allows you to do is to write a VHDL code or virtual hardware descriptive language that mimics hardware that you then upload onto the FPGA and you're essentially got a reprogrammable ASIC. Yeah, so the, the what, think of it this way, and they're not the, the, being used for cryptocurrencies, this is a fairly new concept, and a lot of the ASICs actually have FPGAs inside of them. It's one of the four parts that allow it to do what it does. But F FPGA basically allows you to take physical things and emulate them in a digital environment. And so it leaves you a sandbox. And these are, um, it basically, you could program a 1070 or a 1080 or a 1050 or an AMD Vega card or anything else you can even imagine into these cards based on memory and channel limitations, um, bit rates. There's certain limitations based on the hardware. But this is an open platform that allows you to emulate things. So normally these are used for rapid prototyping in the industries. These are used in aer aerodyna aeronautics. These are used in the space programs. Uh, oh. Cell phone towers are a very common use. They're actually used to uh, create ASICs. What you build one, is, you build a basically a virtual replica of an ASIC in the FPGA to test it and figure out uh, specifications, power draw before you'd actually implement it in the hardware. So formerly, it was it was strictly used in the commercial industry, and it was Xilinx was one of the two major producers of these boards. And Xilinx isn't necessarily a developer of FPGAs; they're more of a distributor and reseller they 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 get orders from clients they design those orders and then they order those um, basically by custom jobs they assemble they basically they find the parts and then they assemble them yes it's exactly but they actually don't if you were to talk to xilinx or you were to talk to these guys about using them for cryptocurrency mining they're not going to have a lot of information for you that's not their understanding they're simply just a provider of the hardware now where does that leave guys like spencer and i that now have 11 of these FPGA cards on the web, that now have a bunch of our clients, our, tr our clients who trust in our opinions. We just told them that they should buy some of these FPGA cards. Uh, now, why would we do something like that, Spencer? Because they're looking like they're going to be extremely profitable. At Break the that tune down. Of 30 to 50 to 100 dollars a day, depending on the uh, what coin you're going to be mining and how the FPGAs actually affect the mining market when they are released in August. Yeah, so the, 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 the burden is going to be on the initial developers to get caught up to speed with this technology, but they've actually already programmed a C++ and a C kit, which will allow you to develop in C on top of the VGA, what's the language? VHDL. VH, v -A DHL? VHDL. VHDL. See, this is a little outside of my scope. Spencer's been, he's got a little farther in the book than me. But so this, the C++, the C++ ability will make it so that programmers like me can assist programmers like Spencer into really figuring out what these can do for us. Now, they're selling roughly for about $3,600 US. 37, yeah. And they've just now sold out. Yep. Um, we were able to secure probably 20 in total for our team. So we're gonna have a ton here at the mine. And we know a bunch of other people on the FPGA website. FPGA, the most advanced mining, are the most advanced miners. That's a great group on Facebook. We've got a whole community of other people who are preparing themselves for developing on these platforms as well. Um, so Spencer, why don't you tell us a little bit about how v uh, FPGAs have already been secretly used in the market. Tell us about how they're implemented and how they're different from ASICs, and then talk about uh, where they kind of come in between ASIC and GPU. So basically, 
The, an ASIC is, to, you could consider an ASIC to be slightly slower, or to be the fastest way of uh, accomplishing an algorithm on hardware. So basically, any, you can, any, anything you write, do in hardware can be done in software, and anything you do in software can be replicated in hardware. Anything you do on hardware will always be faster always. than the software application. So on the and that's far, due to memory limitations yeah. and channel limitations and bitrate limitations and lane limitations. And the fact that you're simulating stuff that you're now having to reprocess at different levels. Ah, right, because you're simulating it, and then right. Thank you. Okay. And so basically, on the one end of the spectrum, you have something like a CPU that's uh, very fast. It's pure hardware, but it has a lot of applications, very simulating. Uh, uh, slightly over, you have the GPU, which uh, can simulate a lot of stuff, but you're limited by the, architecture. Uh, by the architecture, and it'd be considered a bit slower than the CPUs. Yep. Uh, on the next type of the scale, you'd have the FPGAs. So they're faster than the GPUs, but they're not as fast as the ASICs. But with the FPGAs, they are re reprogrammable. Yes, so, so they're easier to fine tune, they're easier to optimize. A great example would be one blockchain might be running at four bits, whereas another blockchain might only be running at two bits of information, or you might be able to do the work with only two bits. With the ASIC, it's built to the specificity, or specific function of each blockchain. So if they needed 16 bits for the Ethereum blockchain, they'll program it so it's always 16 bits. But the nice thing about the FPGA is, if, if the, we only need two bits, and the blockchain normally uses four, we can actually limit it to two bits. Uh, saving memory, power consumption, and time, essentially. So an ASIC stands for uh, Application Specific uh, Integrated Circuit. So that's basically a board that's been designed to do a specific application, and that's all of it. So that's basically, it. I get an ASIC that does F hash. All it will ever do is F hash, and it will not do upgrades of F hash yeah, in the future. So if they decide to change F hash, fork, so that, a, fork, fork away from it, fork F hash, so that it is against ASICs. So that would be changing the code slightly, so that the hardware and the ASIC is no longer uh, applicable you'd be able to implement that change in the software that, or in the code that you're running on the FPGA. Multi-algorithm blockchains have done that. Kryptonite Heavy did that. They did that by, by changing, again, the amount of bits, memory requirements. You can change the amount of memory that's required, making all the equipment on the market obsolete. So there is certainly a lot. People are still more worried about ASICs than they should be. Mm -hmm. There's still a lot of different functions and ways that they can be monitored they can be challenged or they can be essentially out, out, ousted of the market yeah now reason we like fpgas is because it's going to allow us to do everything that we would do in an asics in a software developed environment it allows us to simulate all of those things and allow us to test them dynamically on a regular basis so uh, fpgas and mining aren't really a new thing uh, people have been doing them for a while, but the very under the problem radar. is that there's a very high bar to entry. Writing VHDL code is very difficult, it takes a lot of time and research, and it's just not a lot of pe people do. Also, the FPGAs are a bit on the expensive side, so not everyone has the hardware lying around to do this. Most of the people who are able to write these languages work in-house for companies like cell phone companies yeah. or, or large corporations where they're doing this rapid development on these FPGA flat platforms in application specific stuff so a guy that works for a cell phone company will only ever get to touch an FPGA to make it channel as much data for the 4G and 5G cell phone uh, traffic that's all they use them for and they use them in in exchange or in place of a full computer system instead of having a, a expensive server processor and lots of memory they use a all-in-one solution and then they daisy link those in series to allow them to have more bandwidth mm -hmm. on a cell phone tower. Now, these people don't get to experiment on these cards at home. Mm -hmm. Because these cards cost four to $8,000, you don't just take one home as a hobby or as a keen interest. The only people that are interested in using these for mining cryptocurrencies right now are very keen and very knowledgeable on the subject. So what we've done is we've tried to create a community to bring as many of those people together. Now, where do you see the future of the ASICs going? And where do you see the FPGAs having an application in that? 
Um, well, I see ASICs getting more and more phased out. Uh, just basically ASICs go against the whole ethos of uh, open decentralized blockchain because now you have centralized producers that are uh, building these things. You have stuff happening like Bitmain. Uh, we have problems where the ASICs are getting built and then they're being ran for uh, three, four months before three, they four ship, months, which then kills all the profitability. Well, we're experiencing once they a ton of fifty-one percent attacks right now. Consensus so attacks thing. across the board, yeah. and a lot of that's Bitmain equipment. So you, so you like myself feel that ASICs will continue to be fought against. I do. I think there's there are some projects that are wanting to use ASICs to be able to so like Sumo Coin. They forked into Crypto Night Heavy, and then the team decided that they're going to fork, fork back, back so that they can use ASICs as part of their blockchain. Now we got to understand why did they? What was the real reason for forking back? Enough miners didn't move over. Yeah. So their blockchain wasn't functional or secure to a point that they wanted. What happened is, and we did the same thing when Sumo forked. Did we upgrade all our clients' machines? Yeah. We we tried. Yeah. But lots of our clients didn't upgrade. Them. Yeah, it took a while. Right, and by so it it by the time we upgraded, they had forked, and then forked back. Yeah. For a couple people, and that's just their own. They weren't keeping up on the uh, the changes. But that's what you got to watch for with this stuff. Is the market's so dynamic, and I really do feel the FPGAs are the most dynamic hardware. Yeah. Aside from a multi-core server. Um. But yeah, so the ASICs will never be as power, or the FPGA won't be as uh, power efficient as something like an ASIC, but you are gaining that reprogrammability. They're very dynamic. And, and that's gonna allow us to do what's called bit streams. So basically the environment that they've set these up, they've tried to set up a commerce environment to allow people that don't have the knowledge that Spencer and I have to be able to use these cards. So Spencer, can you extreme, explain the Bitstream concept to everybody? So uh, a group of developers on uh, Bitcoin Talk uh, decided that they wanted to make FPGAs a thing. So one of the developers uh, created a shell. And what that does, it allows anyone who can write a Bitstream to upload their uh, Bitstream onto the shell, which then encrypts it, and they work a 4% uh, dev fee into the Bitstream so that the creators get paid because intellectual property is very uh, important. important. And people who continue to make upgrades for our mining and make yeah. our mining more efficient, they should definitely. They should get definitely paid. get paid. So we do. We never. We have never turned off our dev fees. No. Not once have we ever done it. No. Nope. Okay. Yeah. So go on. Um. Yeah. So. So they've been designing this concept of the shells. Shell. For the bit streams, there's several bit streams already on that the market. Been, yeah, that have been released. Yeah, and the. Uh, these bitstreams are basically the package of code that's required to program the the FPGA. Yeah, they're so, the package that you load on so that you can run the code to emulate the hardware. So this will be as easy as using your encrypted key that you receive with the hardware to uh, retrieve access to those bitstreams. And then people like Minority, people like uh, Squirrel Search, and all these other guys, they're gonna have developers will have access to bitstreams using that bitstream you can essentially use all the work that they've done at a 4% uh, commission. Um, and we're talking, we've seen, we've seen people talking about returns as much as $120 a day. Yeah. Now that's been, the S stuff has been shut down by some of the developers, but that doesn't mean that the guys who are, got their hands on the cards now don't know something that guys like Spencer and I are gonna figure out in the future. Now, we're, we're probably gonna leave it there for now. The FPGAs, we're really excited. Yeah. We put a ton of money into it. And one of the things we want to make sure is that we uh, stay ahead of all this. So if you guys have any questions, if you guys want to get involved with the FPGA development, um, Acorn just hit the market, and Acorn is essentially a micro FPGA. Yep. And um, accelerator. Yep. And there's a few other. We're looking at getting some used FPGAs for scientific research and neural learning and a few other things. So if you guys have any questions, just leave them in the video. Make sure you join our group, FPGA, the most advanced miners, and. Um, Feel free to add Spencer and I up on Facebook and, and message us anytime. We're here to help. We really want to help everyone profit just like we have been. We've been having nothing but great experiences with blockchain and cryptocurrency so far. We've built up from nothing into an entire crypto farm, entire companies from this. And now we have entire communities putting their money together to, to help try and generate a, a, a retirement worth of income. So uh, I'm Alex. And I'm Spencer. And we're the Crypto Kings. That's all we got for you right now. You want to call your mom back real fast? Yeah.